it's over to you. Thank you, that's very kind. Um, well, thank you and welcome. Um, we are um, a, group, uh, sorry, a small group, nevertheless, I think it's highly interesting how the discussion can um, be, I would say, concentrated and really more detailed um, is, is how I see this. Um, so what we're, gonna, what we're presenting here um, is our data ethics frameworks for research-based learning in higher education. Um, I'm not sure, as we are not that many, shall we present each other and, you know, a little bit who we are and what's our interest in the workshop? I think that can give us a little bit of context, if, if you're okay with that. Yep, great. Anyone who would like to start? Tom, would you like to start maybe presenting yourself and, and what brings you to the workshop? How, how are you interested in this? How and why? Uh, Do feel free to grab the mic if you can, or um, or just write in the in the chat. Tom, Tim, Gemma, any of you, um, if you do have access to speak, um, then do feel free. Is that working now? It is. Yeah. Oh, yes. Is that okay. Yeah. yeah, sorry. No, I had to go to the drop down menu. I think there's a few sort of, I have webcams and mics and everything. Anyway, yeah, sorry. I suppose I've been a member of our Institute of Ethics Research Committee for a number of years. And I'd have to say the whole thing around data ethics has certainly become a lot more important. And um, dare I say it, um, for those of us in the EU, Leo, sorry. Um, but uh, no, the whole GDPR thing has, has really sort of become far more important. And to be honest, if I can pick up any sort of hints or tips, um, look, I, I, I mean, I, I, when I think back, I think a lot of us would look at um issues which may or certain things which we wouldn't have considered to be an issue even six seven eight nine years ago we certainly need to be far more cognizant of what we're doing uh with the data and what even constitutes data ethics and stuff mm. so i suppose that's what you know I, I, the problem i fear is though what we're doing or maybe there's a, 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 a an issue that we we start avoiding uh, ethical issues rather than managing them that's excellent tom it's so you're so attuned with what what our kind of perception has been and why this is taking place so it's phenomenal to have you thank you tom um tim or 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 um Hema, any one of you would like to oh tim there you got the mic um yeah look i'm just here um i'm actually running up uh to set up some online research courses at the university of adelaide so i'm here to i guess learn from what everyone else is sharing at the moment. Great, thank you. Thank you, Tim. That's great. Gemma. Hi. Emma. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon. Well, I, uh, in my case, I think that is very interesting because I perceive that some researchers and some colleagues as well from the university, I'm from the University of Barcelona, um, are concerned about um, the educational research data, what they can do with them, uh, what uh, ethical considerations they have to um, consider, uh, all these kind of doubts that in some meetings they manifest. And mm -hmm. that's why I think that it's important to clarify this for myself in this case, and also for my colleagues to try to inform them and to, um, to train a little bit also our students because they will be the future. So that's why I think that is going to be very interesting. Thank you, Caroline. Yeah, great, Emma. Great to have you here. I, I think we're all worried about the same thing. So it's brilliant that we are together. It doesn't matter that we are small or big. I think we are the ones that we need to be here. And at least we are in this on the same page, I would say. Um, so in the next slide, we have... Um, framed i would say our the context of our project um what are we doing and why are we doing it i think um 
So <laughs> we're doing lots of research, absolutely, yes. So this is a project called, um, yes, they will be, Tom, they will be available later. So the project is called um, Understanding Data, Praxis and Politics. And, and already the name is, I would say, self-explanatory, if that is possible. And the idea was really to think about a critical approach to data literacies and what do we need to be able to unpack and uncover the politics of it. And once we are able to do that, I think we be more able to do data praxis, which means, you know, theory and practice coming together in our uh, teaching practice. That is kind of the idea. We have been doing pilots, so we developed an open educational resource, which will be available once the pilots are ready, because it's very... Um, organic at the moment, I would say, but it's an open educational resource that lives in WordPress and it has content that we have developed um, and it has activities and we are running it in different sites. So the University of Tangasa in Nairobi was one site. Um, there is the University of the Open University of Catalonia is another site. Um, the University of La Republica in Uruguay and Surrey here in England. So we're running kind of these multi-site, if you wish, pilots. And yeah, I think they have been very welcome and people are quite keen to learn um, about it. So what is what we have been noticing? And, and I saw so that we have more time to work together. Can you go to the next slide, Leo? I think because what I want <clears throat> to kind of share with you is, these are the, the sites where we are um, doing. So in South America, it's massive. Really, I think the, how can you say, the welcoming has been big. And in Uruguay, I have to say, and in general, L Latin America is strong in paying attention to open data, to open innovation, to ethics, while you work with open data. And I think the criticality there is incredibly rich. We have enjoyed a lot being in, in, in Uruguay. The same happens with Nairobi. Um, although we had a, a, a smaller cohort in Nairobi, the, 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 the keenness to work with open data and to be critical about which data and is everyone represented in the data sets? And is everyone um, recognized? Is everyone equally important? And, and, and has been very rich, the discussion there. And so what we, the next slide, please, thanks. So what you, I think, Tom, you really said something that we have been thinking as a group, and it's about the meaning of data has completely changed. Data is not the same thing we used to think about I would say even five, six years ago, it has really changed completely. The meaning, but not only the meaning, but also the power it holds. And so who holds the power and who holds the data? Who are the owners of that power? You know, and how then, in a way, what is the role of education in examining these uneven dynamics of power? Who are, so what's our role? So the, in our teaching kind of um, practice, that we can awake or, um, I don't know, uncover or raise awareness that these things are happening and the world of the whole data-driven systems, data-driven technologies are just really kind of taking over. It's like they're like a virus. <laughs> they're spreading like you don't see it, but it's happening every day more and more. So really, we are thinking, well, in this context, what is data ethics? What is it? And so here we're going to then um, want, we, we would like you to think together with us, what is data ethics? How do you teach it? How do you do it? Um, and what, for example, to begin with, we're very interested in hearing what are the biggest challenge of embedding ethics in research-based learning or problem-based learning. So yeah, we have um, done a little Mentimeter slide. And Leo, yeah, great. If, if you then go, if you have either your computer or your mobile device, what makes you happier, uh, menti.com. And once you are in Menti, you need to um, put the code in that, um, yeah, there it is. 
83257470 and then the question will automatically come up in your device whatever your device is oh sorry yeah <laughs> sorry that is easier i didn't have the chat thank you uh, javiera yeah sorry if anyone has any trouble please just let us know and we're happy to help Yeah, exactly. Um, I was I was just wanting to say um, when you when the the, the one that um, the person that wrote need to address people. Could you extend a bit on that? What do you mean by need to address people? Maybe I I don't want to assume anything. That was me actually. Um, uh, one of one of the things that we, when we think about doing research based learning, it, uh, we think about the data. The data is not just a thing without Mostly, when you talk about data related to people, the data is not the relevant thing, it's the people that it's described or portrayed yeah. in such data. So don't treat data about humans um, in a way that you would try to uh, that not, I don't know, use data from transport or data from environment. Just it's, it's, it's this thing, it's just to bring, to, to care of the, to care, to think about the people first. Absolutely. Thank you. I think that is, and it's about people, and it's really about people. And I, I didn't want to assume that I was understanding this, so that was my question. Um, and so, yeah, great points, really. Um, changing mindsets, I think that is also quite important. Um, yeah, anyone would like to expand or explain? or Great, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think... Um... There is, I, I've been on the fear of losing ownership and, 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 and sort of changing mindsets, particularly for people who have come from this, uh, this sort of idea, and maybe I'm, I'm damning the whole STEM area a bit when they shouldn't, but there's a sense of proprietorship and, you know, this is ours and we're, you know, we need to be forced there to beat. But I do think, particularly for, you know, stuff like Plan S, I think, has been a huge game changer or potentially it's a game changer in that the EU is, is, is mandating. I mean, the, rea the reality is an awful lot of research is paid for by public funds and yet then it's hidden behind paywalls and the data isn't shared and stuff. So I think there's two things that are going on. I think that we need to... Um, educate people to kind of go well by the way you actually you're on a 300,000 euro publicly funded project so you know it's not technically your data but then I think also I think you know um apart from just the mindset I think people are not even quite sure how to do it like you know like how okay so if they have that data how do they actually make it publicly available in an accessible you know so to learn all about taggings and metadata and and then I suppose the other thing as well the idea that Historically, I would have asked people to take part in research and the data would have been just for this project. In theory, I'm making that project, that project data available in going, it's going out into the ether. But, uh, you know, a lot of people, myself included, wouldn't be exactly sure how we do that. So even if we, we get people to commit to the mind, changing the mindset, I think they'll need to know how to practical. Okay, so even if you have someone who, okay, you, you, you've changed my mindset, now how do I actually ethically share it and do it properly? Sorry for rabbiting on a bit. Oh, excellent point, because in, in the pilot we're doing, one of the things that we see is that the, that the, the, the technicalities that you were just pointing to, you know, how do I do this, is as important as the criticality. It really goes hand in hand, so it's it's a really very good point. Um, and it's about also, do we need to think, we should be thinking about how can we integrate this, isn't it? So the technicalities and the how to do this is, is one thing that needs to be integrated in our kind of new approach. Um, Great. Anyone else uh, would like to extend or? Um... Yeah, Leo, I agree with you. I agree with you. 
Yeah, and, and, and I think when <laughs> this is from, from, from part of the research that we're doing, we, 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 we look into around 250 research uh, method scores from quantitative and qualitative kind of areas. And we, 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 find, we found out that most of, 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 of the mentions of ethics and data ethics, though quite, quite scarce, quite, quite, quite narrow, just refer to informed consent. Just kind of make sure that you get informed consent from people. That was it. Getting informed consent is way more complex than just getting people to sign the form. First, you need to make sure that the people that you're working with or studying can read. Let's start from that. Then can understand what you are writing. Then can understand the language in your writing. They are, that they are not vulnerable. That they are not feels coerced into participating. So informed consent is just is 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 a is a very top layer or something that is indeed quite complex. I, I don't know what what do you what what the rest of you think. But I can say that we find like very little evidence of that the research method courses in, in general include something that is beyond informed consent and the dimensions about data ethics are just like almost non-existent. Yeah, great point, Javi. Great point. Anyone wanting to add something? Yeah, Hema, go ahead, please. Yes, I was thinking now that Javier was mentioning this about the complexity of uh, the, the consent that uh, in this uh, mobile age that we are immersed right now, it's also difficult because um, the concept of education extends uh, beyond the traditional understanding. And sometimes if we want to do like something about mobile learning, um, it's, it's really difficult to control this um, immediacy uh, about the informed consent. I, I find it really difficult. I don't know how we can uh, deal with this, but it's something that is, is real, it is, is uh, in the society right now. Yeah, it's an excellent point, Emma. I agree with you. And, and, and also, if you take, for example, data from the internet, not necessarily, you know, things that are already there. Who, who owns that? And are they aware? And, you know, so many things that one, it's, it's this complexity that is, you know, layers are being added as we talk in a way. Um, Tom is saying as someone who lectures research method as well as a member of our research. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tom. So I suggest, because I know, that, I think it's you, Tom, you need to uh, leave earlier a little bit. So shall we go to our next activity? I think that's a good idea that, that, that will, um, that will uh, help us to deliberate and think about. Um, yeah, maybe our, we can do it all together. The same yeah, I, the, the I think that's a brilliant idea. If, if um, who shares the Google document in, I can share it in the chat. I can put the link. If right you can, away. please. Yeah, I'm doing it right away. There we go. So if you can go to this document, please, if you're so kind. Um, I'll, I'll be happy, Tom. Yeah, this is, this is a shared doc. Yeah. In, in it. And if you, yeah, so um, Javier, do you want to lead on this one? And I, I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, we had a, just a little bit of context. We had a sort of uh, expectation of um, breaking into breakout groups and working on one, one framework per group. Um, but I think we need to work kind of all more together as a, as a collective. <laughs> Great, Leo. Thank you for that one. Yeah, that uh, and, and let me explain you quickly the background. What we did after that, we reviewed the 250 documents, like, like, sorry, syllabi on research methods. Then we went and reviewed the data ethics frameworks that were circulating around. So Doc is asking me to request access. Okay, let me open up access to the court. Garo, can you open up the access? So you, I think you created this one. Um, so what we did, it was like basically we went with Leo and uh, <laughs> map some some really cool, uh, interesting kind of splashed around um, uh, data ethics frameworks to see who were publishing those frameworks, who were creating those frameworks, where they come from, and so what we want you guys to do is to look at them and say if the framework as it is is useful or useless 
for teaching or which elements could be useful or, or useless? Uh, can you see them now? I mean, you're done. Okay, go. lovely. And I lost it. This, this is what happened when you have like 10 browsers open. Jeez, right. where is it? Right, great, right, great. Right. So this one. here is then maybe if we go all to the group one framework, I think, and it's a it's an interesting one. I would say it has quite a lot of detail, which not all of the frameworks have, but this one has. And I see here, where I was like lost. So for, for, for us, it's like if you. There, there is already. I gave up. Uh, try again or refresh. I did again. I did give um, editing privileges, but maybe you need to refresh. Um, let me check. Yeah, just a sec. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, fine. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Super. Yeah. Right. If you can just do, just yeah. put an X if you find it useful, or like, let, let's find a, a quick way. So for the first, um, the first one. It has some over, we call it something like, well, they they call themselves overarching principles. So this is kind of the main principles in which their framework is based. So one is like consider if, if not collect informed and proposed consent of data. Um, just giving a one or a zero. Let's let's play binary. I think it's easier. So do you see the zeros are like useless and one is useful. So then it's easy for us to count things. And then for me, it will be like, as you did explain, it will be like, I you know, let's say. But also, you know, you can write comments, as Leo was saying, if, if you have any any thoughts about this in the with the comment feature, you can write a thought yeah. that you have or, you know, any concern that you might have around one of these principles. Is it is it is it good? Is it bad? Is it weak? Is it? Yeah, so we want to show you some few of them. So if we can just go for the next maybe five minutes, and we, so we manage to not lose Tom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, five minutes would be great because that would make it thirty-five past three. I think that five minutes seems little, yeah. but it is a lot of time. Gemma, can you? You still cannot edit. Can you leave comments? Let me see. I think I, I yeah, can yeah. put it. Yeah, yeah. There are comments already. No, Gemma. Let me see. I can give it to Gemma because I have her email. So let me. She give is. You access, and I, and I has access. Everyone has. Okay. You no, know, because Gemma was saying that she couldn't in the chat. Now, Gemma, if you refresh, I gave you access. Yeah, I can see the G. You just can leave comments. I think it's faster if you want to. Tim, are you are you okay with this activity? Uh, we have a Tom and a Tim, I think. Yeah, Tim. As well. Tim and Tom. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, take you. your time, Tim. It's I, I, uh, I agree. Read it and and you know don't feel rushed. You don't need to go field by field. You just can give like an overarching uh, kind of comment to the to the entire framework.
great. Comments are being added. Love it. Thank you for your contribution. That's great. Gemma, you can leave comments if you want. Okay. Still have a couple of minutes to go, so take your time. Yeah, exactly, Leo. Good, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's our plan. So now you're looking at anonymous uh, frameworks, but then we'll show you which framework it is and who who, pr who produced it. So if you can just go to the second or third or later on, just wander around in the document. So we didn't write any of this, don't worry. <laughs> you know, but I was thinking, Javi, it's interesting also the wording because that makes then the interpretation easier or harder. So it's a good point. Yeah. To, yeah, what, um, what uh, is suggested about the wording. And, and they have different approaches. Some bits are for data, some bits have data for artificial intelligence. So have a wander around in the document because you'll find that they, they are quite diverse. Okay. What do you think, for example, for the last two ones? Number six and number seven. So just give it a couple of minutes so you can just visit the ones at the bottom. Honestly, I'm very grateful like to have us an anonymous today. What do you say, Leo and Javi? One, one of the top. Who's Leo, the anonymous mink? No. I, I was just saying, I like that we have an anonymous mink. <laughs> but oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good point on group three, uh, Tom. First, the law. It's like, I, I will give you my impressions later on because I have lots of impressions after reading and rereading this 
this one. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you're right. Some music in the background is always good. <laughs> okay, so when whenever you're ready, we just can we can tell you a bit the story of, of, of all this if you want to hear a story, which is not really a fairy tale. Yeah. So Leo, can you go back to the presentation and, and disclose where they come from? Okay. So if you recognize some of the principles that you mentioned, some of them come from the government. So the US government, the Australian government, US government, uh, some come from a, the private sector, South Analytics, Accenture, uh, some come from think, uh, uh, think tanks. Uh, the late last one is um, Data Ethics EU, which is an academic think tank, which is part of civil society, part of academia. And the, the, the last of the frames that you saw is a state of feminism by Klein and Ignacio. So what do you think? Anyone wants to take up the make? Maybe because um, Tom, uh, this is a summary. It's, they, they, they have some details. Some of them have, some of them don't. Uh, yeah. Tom, do you want to, do you want to say what, what do you think about the, all this experience? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's really good. And you're right. I think some of the language there is a little bit um, uh, vague. I mean, I think like six or seven. I had a look, and I thought they were so vague as to be not much use. They were. They weren't even. I wouldn't even call them principles. They were so, so they were just words, or maybe. It, it's it's like some of the stuff, and I don't mean to sound disparaging, but it's like sort of saying, "Would you like to see world peace?" What are you going to say? No, I'm an arms dealer. You know, I mean, some of the stuff is is a little bit over the top. Sometimes some of the language I actually just didn't know what it meant, uh, to be quite honest. And some of it here. I don't know whether your average researcher, um, certainly social researchers, would actually have the technical knowledge. Some of the stuff would actually make me feel a bit stupid and, and you know, that I'm not very good at my job because I don't know some of this stuff. So I think, like, frameworks are brilliant and I absolutely think we need guidance and, and structure, but not to the extent that they're, they're so vague they just end like sound bites, or not to be so technically prescriptive that we'll end up with, like, you know, only two people and, and, and one dog will end up doing the research. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know yeah. if I'm rambling on. Yeah, for, for me sometimes, what I, what, what I could see here is, is, is like, they put a tech guy with a lawyer to come with something. They needed to come with something, so they came with something. Um, <laughs> does it feel like in a, in a bit of a rush and not thought through? Uh, it also, for me, it, takes that some of the people that have written some of this, mostly they, they come, the ones that come from the private sector, have never taken a course in, in research ethics. So basically it's all about like, oh, what do we do? How we do it? We make it fair. We tick, 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 tick some boxes. We look cool. We look um, sustainable and pro or, or like woke. And that's it. And move on. But so we find it sometimes a little bit vague. But forcing all this together, and of course the one that is not here, yeah, the person is not here presenting today, uh, Christian Timmerman. He, he's a philosopher and he does bioethics. So we, we've been working and developing this like through a lot of like philosophical research as well. So if we can move forward, Leo. Um, we're thinking of asking you how, uh, to discuss our our um, um, our framework to see what do you think. Um, and how we can improve it. So I don't know if you want to do it now. Can can we can just quickly have a look into it? Kara, what do you think? Um, yes, yes. I, I was wondering one thing is I know that um, Tim, I think, or Tom, sorry, I missed, I messed with whom needs to leave earlier. Um, but I think it's interesting to Go just maybe four minutes could be good timing to just look at our initial um, concepts. They're not set and we are learning from what we are hearing from you in this chat. Um, so, yeah, I think that that can be a good thing. Sorry. To 
just to let you know that this is kind of the short descriptions. We have longer ones. <laughs> they need to fit into today's small timing. So Tom and Hema, can you see the Jamboard? You are you on it? Uh, I just emailed my class telling them I'll be. I won't see them till ten. Don't worry, so we've another few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know I'm enjoying this immensely. Um, so, uh, and you're right. I, you know, we we definitely need frameworks, but it's, it's finding one that works. Okay, so I'm in the Jamboard. Yeah. Okay, so okay, the idea, so is if, you, if you can look at each slide, there is one concept, dimension, however we want to call it, and oh, we yeah. would like to, yeah, what, what, you know, there are two things. What do you think about it? Is it too vague? Is it too um, narrow? And do you think anything that you could do in your class to action, enact, um, foster, I don't know, this principle or this this dimension that's kind of what we want so yeah uh, the, uh, first it is as respect autonomy um so it's to tell to teach students and to teach her uh, actually ourselves to um enable others to make informed decisions and, and in this case, again, the complex, the complex, if you're working with a community, make sure that you're speaking the language that the community understands. And if that means from vulnerable, um, from children, vulnerable people, people from migrant backgrounds, if you don't speak things in a clear way, they cannot make an informed decision. But it, it's, it's to have this discussion. What, what do you think? What, what, you, what you will think? Yeah, it's good, Leo. It's fine. It's just to take a look, I would say. Yeah, the trick is uh, will be how to do that enabling. I think I think it's the first is having honest conversations and make and show them consent forms that they won't be able to understand. For example, give them informed consent forms that they won't be able to understand, so they they understand how, the impact of being kind of feel excluded from a conversation and this is kind of the work that i'm doing with some of my fellows at on the latin american initiative for open data and is to talk about how to make how to produce informed uh, consent from people that a may not speak spanish b may not be able to read c both <laughs> yeah i agree the trick will be how to do that enabling and that's why this is not a quick fix you know that this needs deliberation and thinking and it, it, i don't think this can be you know can be done like okay write a framework throw it out there and here we go i think it needs deliberation and it needs thought process yeah and i can see that in in, in number three so how far do we have to go to ensure this many small research groups have limited resources um Yeah, well, when in, in, this is mostly when we work and uh, yeah, it's limited, thinking about the limited resources, so I'm trying to think and speak at the same time, and I'm not very good at this. Uh, it's, it's kind of how, when you work with certain data sets from complex backgrounds, you try, when, when you process the data, when you analyze the data, you try to treat them equally, not better or worse, depending on the group of people that produce that data. So this is kind of the, the, the concept of fairness, that you treat everyone as equal. And, and it's very related with like a prevent bias in a way or another. But it's making a fair analysis. Can we go to the next one? Yeah. So respect privacy is um, understand that not all the information needs to be put in the public sphere. 
Um, and it's important to protect the privacy and the respect of people. And the other day, I was, I was talking with, with some colleagues and, and, and at the ethics committee that they said, but, but I, this, the, 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 the researcher said, but I was I have asked uh, informed consent to the participant. His participants were uh, people that work in, in the prison system in the UK. Well, you ask them to them to talk about their work, but their work it's directly related with people that cannot give informed consent because they're in prison. So it's like all of the tertiary data. Uh, if you collect data about people that work in the prison system, these people shouldn't be disclosing stories about the inmates, let's say, for example, because the inmates haven't given the consent for the stories to be shared. You know where I'm going. Yeah, and, and also, it's a fair point. It's a very good point. So you respect the privacy of everyone. And there's stories that shouldn't be told in public. They don't belong to the public space. Um, the, 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 there is a case in Argentina not lo long ago that where the schools decided to use a predictive analysis, and that was with, a, of course, help of a very big uh, tech company, to predict potential um, teenage pregnancies. And they were exposing a lot of information about these these girls. They didn't get they ever gave the consent, and they were like, "Oh, the, the girls from this neighborhood tend to be promiscuous." That, that was an awful way to say things. Can can we go? I think one more, one more. Yeah, who determines acceptability? That's a very very good point. I think that that will come that will need a, a bigger discussion with the team and yeah you know and what, what i'm seeing here and what comes clear to me is how discussing with with interested people in the topic enriches the the view of each of these principles or you know concepts or dimensions i think that is yeah. really really important yeah and for do no harm i think training is it's really important mostly when you do data analysis this is another thing that you you might I'm just giving you a preview of our paper, but in a way or another, what we found out when we then review 80 data science programs, they, most of them, only 14 of them, I think, if I'm not sure, address ethics. So they tell people how, they teach people how to analyze data, they don't tell people how to analyze it fairly. So that, that the principle of do no harm, if you can move forward to do no harm, needs training and mostly in the data science um programs tom what do you think i can hear you saying like oh sorry i i, I should I, i'm typing why i should have knocked off my microphone yeah i, I mean I, I just on the next point there as well a data subject should be in a position to decide when and what data they wish to disclose and to whom and i take on that i mean I, i've just been doing a, a, a large survey in my own university um and i put in this this um quite a long information letter but some of the students who know me they emailed me back and said oh my god tom i mean like i, I didn't want, i just wanted to I, I was happy to do the survey um but you know i didn't want to read a, another essay you know uh, uh so i mean some of the stuff here we we we, we, we i don't disagree with any of the, the stuff here it's it's finding that that balance mm. i think about and you're right we need to consider as I said, there is it's an increasingly diverse population, but uh, I, I think, as I said, like, see some of this stuff is, is, is absolutely fine when you're doing uh, one to one to stuff. But like you know, you're sending out a link to maybe you know three thousand students. You're just hoping that some of them will click on it. So do I how do I provide them with an attached information letter, which I did, and just informally I asked some of them, you know, how many of you read it, and and. Of the five people I asked, none of them had read the information letter. Yeah, um, yeah. But now, in in the survey, I also had a really stripped down version of 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 you know informed consent as well. So that I I was sort of working the assumption they may not actually read all of the attached, and that's the thing there. I suppose it's about balancing, isn't it? Um, yes. So, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'd better run to my class. Guys, can I reach out to the three of you? Because I really would love to consider and, and, and continue this, this discussion. And, and at some stage, I'm so glad I came along. 
<laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. It's fantastic to have you here. Yeah, yeah, not at all. No, I I really really enjoyed it, and I'm sorry, about, but I really better I better run to this to, to the class here. But look at yeah, uh, well, Le Leo, can I, I message you, you and, and then I will get the contact details? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Leo, can you send them a copy of the chapter of data ethics? Because um, we're yes, just going to release sure. the chapter today, so we'll send them. Okay. Sorry, sorry to run. As I said, no, no look, I'll hook up the I'll hook up the three of you, but Leo, I'll reach out to you and we'll talk soon. God bless everybody. Thanks, God bless man. you. Bye, bye, Tom. Take Cheers. care. Bye, 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 bye. Um, Leo, can we go back to the presentation? I think I think it's it's eight minutes, and I think it's time to kind of give the mic also to to Gemma and uh, and Tim. You go back to the presentation, then we can keep doing this. Ha Gemma, Tim, do you have anything to say? Because we really want to talk to you guys. Can you move forward, yeah. Leo? Yes, I was uh, sharing something, but I think that you t uh, changed the slide. I, I'm lost now. I'm, I don't know where I was um, adding the information. I think it was, uh, let me see. In the jump board, I think. Yeah, I, but I mean, it was before, I think it was respect privacy. I wasn't there and you were like two more. I'm sorry, I wasn't so quickly. I was saying here that uh, it's necessary to um, also to um, guarantee reputation and, and the trust also from the yeah. users that you, of course, are respecting their privacy. And but I don't know what else to comment here. And and I think there was another one that I contributed in the first one about the empathy, the, the um, respect autonomy. I yeah. was commenting that it's also um, an activity can be to think on a reverse case, which, which is uh, directly affecting them, because the empathy is like a tool to, to make them understand why it's important to respect autonomy. I was yeah. thinking now in yeah. a class activity, I mean, in something practical. And, and I completely agree with you. When the things happen to you, then you can only see how it affects others. Mm -hmm. So if you if you kind of take away the autonomy at some point, then that person will start to value it. Um, that's yeah. that's really good. Thank you so much, Gemma. No, no, it's okay. Thank you. So yeah, this is this is our 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 little framework. Um, we will be publishing it hopefully quite soon, as soon as we have some time to finish the paper because it's been. Uh, Leo, I don't know, or oh, Carol, if you want to contribute, I think I spoke too much and I'm tired. Um, yeah, I just think having had this experience, um, I think, and I realized more than thinking, how useful it is to have people thinking together with you because it really gives you a different dimension. So I just kind of want to say thank you for being here. And, you know, it doesn't matter if we're three or four or one or two. I think it's so valuable to have the insight from someone that has never seen this and maybe that we haven't talked to. So what I think, I'm just kind of thinking ahead and what are the things we can do um, within the community of OER to just get um, maybe, yeah, people thinking about these dimensions and what are their thoughts and their views, because I think it was really valuable what we did just now. Yeah, I'm yeah really I, 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 I think it's been so, um, so interesting and, um, and it, it um, obviously, like, um, we we were hoping that there would be more people, but even really with, with small numbers, it's really fascinating to um, to get that um, feedback from people. Um, and I wrote in the chat about how it's quite easy to critique the vagueness um, of the language in other frameworks and um, and sort of um, question, you know, what does this really mean? But um, but it's really valuable to have people look at your framework and, and say, um, you know, I, I would need to know a bit more because um, it's, yeah. it's tricky. It's always, it's always open to interpretation. And, and here is where I think the value is exactly that. What do other people interpret from what you have written that yours, you have your, don't, we are so biased all the time. We write and we just assume, and here it is. 
it, exactly what you're saying. So I think I'm incredibly happy that we had this workshop and, and I'm incredibly grateful to Hema to be here and stick with us until now. Um, and I do think this this would be great to just kind of extend these kind of activities to a bit, you know, yeah. a, a outside. It will really be very helpful for us. I am I am absolutely sure. Yeah, and I think we'll need to kind of run some webinars on this at some point. Just just to pilot it for a while. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Gemma, so much, so, so, so much. Uh, we'll have to leave now. <laughs> I have teaching to do and work to do. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Be, be well. Thank you very much for being here. Great. Take care. What an excellent uh, session. Thank you so much. I'm just going to start, stop the recording now.